The discovery was baffling. A small, skillfully crafted human figure pulled from the darkness hundreds of feet beneath the Earth's surface. Not from a shallow archaeological dig, but from a well boring in Nampa, Idaho. This figurine, an artistic representation of the human form, was found in geological strata that conventional science insists predates the very existence of modern humans by millions of years, challenging everything we thought we knew about our ancient past. It is a relic that time tried to bury, a piece of forbidden archaeology that directly contradicts the established narrative of human origins. Before we dig deeper into this incredible discovery and its profound implications, consider subscribing to uncover more hidden histories in suppressed narratives that challenge the official story. In 1889, during a routine well-boring operation near Nampa, Idaho, an extraordinary artifact emerged. Workers penetrated approximately 50 feet of soil, followed by 15 feet of basalt, and then continued through alternating beds of clay and quicksand. At a depth of about 300 feet, the sand pump began to bring up numerous clay balls, densely coated with iron oxide. A few feet deeper, at 320 feet, a stratum showed evidence of a buried land surface with a slight accumulation of vegetable mold. It was from this point, at this incredible depth, that the figurine in question was brought up. The figurine itself was small, about an inch and a half long, made of the same material as the surrounding clay balls. What made it truly remarkable was the perfection with which it represented the human form, specifically a female figure. Its lifelike lineaments, even in the finished parts, were of such quality that they would do credit to the classic centers of art. Upon examination, Professor F. W. Putnam of Harvard University noted the incrustations of iron oxide on its surface, indicating considerable antiquity, and these discolorations match those on the clay balls from the same depth, confirming its genuine context. Furthermore, the well was tubed with heavy iron tubing, driven down section by section, making it impossible for anything to slip in from the sides from higher, more recent layers. The geological context of the Nampa figurine is crucial to understanding its anomalous nature. The clay layer from which it was recovered at a depth of over 300 feet is now considered by the United States Geological Survey to be probably of the Glens Ferry Formation, Upper Idaho Group, which is generally considered to be of Pleo-Pleistocene age. The basalt layer above this formation is dated to the Middle Pleistocene. This places the figurine's age at somewhere between two to four million years old. This dating presents a profound challenge to mainstream archeological and evolutionary theories. According to standard views, humans capable of such artistry, anatomically modern humans, Homo sapiens sapiens, did not arise in their African homeland until about 100,000 years ago. And their arrival in Europe with similar artistic capabilities is dated to about 30,000 to 40,000 years ago. If the Nampa figurine is indeed two to four million years old, it suggests the presence of culturally advanced human beings in North America millions of years before they are conventionally believed to have evolved anywhere on Earth. The implications were so radical that even W.H. Holmes of the Smithsonian Institution, a prominent critic of anomalously old finds, acknowledged the figurine's potential impact. In his 1919 Handbook of Aboriginal American Antiquities, Holmes remarked on the apparent improbability of the occurrence of a well-modeled human figure in deposits of such great antiquity. He noted that if accepted at face value, the specimen establishes an antiquity for Neolithic culture in America so great that we hesitate to accept it without further confirmation. Holmes, typical of the academic response to such anomalies, attempted to explain away the Nampa figurine. He speculated that it could have descended from the surface through some crevice or watercourse penetrating the lava beds and have been carried through deposits of creeping quicksand aided by underground waters to the spot tapped by the drill. However, as noted, the robust iron tubing of the well boring would have made such a descent virtually impossible. Furthermore, Holmes himself conceded that forms of art closely analogous to this figure are far to seek. Neither the Pacific Slope on the west nor the Pueblo region on the south furnishing modeled images of the human figure of like character or of equal artistic merit. 
undermining any suggestion that it was a recent artifact that somehow slipped down. The Nampa figurine is not an isolated case. It is one of many anomalous discoveries that highlight a pattern of knowledge filtration within the scientific community. This refers to an ongoing social process where certain categories of evidence, particularly those that contradict prevailing theories, are systematically suppressed, ignored, or forgotten. Consider other instances documented in historical records, the Castanadolo skeletons from Italy, where anatomically modern human skeletons were found in Pliocene sediments, three to four million years old, with careful geological observations ruling out recent burial. Yet like the Nampa figurine, these were dismissed due to theoretical preconceptions about human evolution. The Piltdown Man hoax, a fabricated ape-man fossil, was accepted for 40 years because it conveniently filled the expected evolutionary gap between apes and humans. Its eventual exposure revealed how powerful preconceived ideas could lead to the acceptance of fraudulent evidence, while genuine but anomalous finds are discarded. Stone tools from the California gold mines. In 1880, J.D. Whitney, the state geologist of California, reviewed advanced stone tools, including spear points and mortars, found deep in gold mine shafts under undisturbed lava layers, dating from nine to over 55 million years old. W.H. Holmes of the Smithsonian openly stated these facts had to be discarded because they didn't fit the story of human evolution as it is understood today. The metallic quasi coin from Illinois. In 1871, William E. Dubois of the Smithsonian reported a copper coin-like object found at a depth of 125 feet in a well boring in Illinois. Geological estimates for that depth suggest an age of 200,000 to 400,000 years. Yet metal coins are traditionally thought to have first appeared in Asia Minor around 800 BCE. Metallic tubes in Cretaceous chalk from France. In 1968, semi-ovoid metallic tubes were discovered in chalk beds estimated to be at least 65 million years old. The researchers concluded that intelligent beings must have lived 65 million years ago. A grooved metallic sphere from South Africa, found in a pyrophyllite deposit near Ottesdal, Western Transvaal, dating back 2.8 billion years. This sphere with three parallel grooves challenges the timeline of intelligent craftsmanship. These cases, including the Nampa figurine, consistently point to a greater antiquity for anatomically modern humans in advanced culture than is currently accepted. The authors of Forbidden Archaeology, Michael A. Cremo and Richard L. Thompson, highlight that this selective handling of evidence is often driven by theoretical preconceptions. If evidence does not conform to the established evolutionary sequence, it is often dismissed as a mistake, an illusion, or a hoax regardless of its quality. The Nampa figurine, resembling Upper Paleolithic Venus figurines like the Villendorf Venus and Oranyation figurines from Europe, thought to be only about 30,000 years old, presents a powerful case for a far earlier and more widespread presence of culturally advanced human beings. It suggests a complex story of human history that remains hidden beneath layers of academic dogma and forgotten discoveries. The refusal to consider such evidence despite its quality and the rigorous procedures of its discovery, reveals a significant knowledge filter operating within the scientific community. The mystery of the Nampa figurine persists, serving as a powerful reminder that much of our history remains untold, buried not just by time and geology, but by the very narratives we construct to understand ourselves. What other secrets lie beneath, waiting to be unearthed and acknowledged? The journey into the cracks of history continues,